What's up guys? Today we're going to be doing our first a little bit of mechanical work on the Mazda Miata. If you guys remember, this is a 2003, so this is a 1.8 liter variable valve timing engine. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and solve our engine code. Um, so the check engine light is currently on for the variable valve timing um, to be open. The circuit is constantly open, it's stuck open or whatever it's called. I'll go ahead and show a picture of the code right now. And we're going to try to solve it today with a new variable valve timing solenoid. Um, so if you guys have the 1.8 like I do with, with the variable valve timing, it's just right here. Um, so you can see it's very easy. So it's actually going to be a very easy install. We're going to go ahead and take off this clip. And then this is, I believe, a 10 millimeter bolt. And then that should just let us pull this solenoid out. We'll go ahead, put the new one in, bolt it down, clip it in, turn the car on, clear the codes, and see if that works. It's a very straightforward install. So let's get right to it. All right, as you can see, we got that 10 millimeter out of the back here. And now what we're gonna go ahead and do is actually put a paper towel underneath. If you guys don't know how variable valve timing solenoid works, basically it uses oil pressure to push the camshaft into a different position. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is put this here. So when we pull out the solenoid, it doesn't drip oil all over our nice semi-clean uh, intake. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take this now, and usually you can just kind of pull it out with one hand. It might take a little bit of twisting. But there we go, we've got one seal. There we go, pulling the whole thing out, perfect. So now you can see, I haven't run mine actually recently. So if you ran yours recently, you might have oil pressure in there. Uh, but you can see we're not dripping too much. So now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna open this real quick, make sure everything looks good, and then we're gonna lube up this one O-ring here, the seal, um, with a little bit of oil. We'll just dab our finger in there, put it on the seal, and then put the new one in. Alright, so one thing you want to do when you have both of these out, you want to make sure that they look like the exact same part. I went ahead and compared mine. Um, they were pretty much the exact same, except for this one has a flat part, if you can see on the end there. It's a little bit flat on the end, um, and the new one actually had a bigger flat part. Um, so more of it was cut out. I don't think that's going to cause an issue, because if it's flat for a reason, then having more flat shouldn't affect it. Um, but we'll always go ahead and see when we plug it in. Um, see if the computer keeps throwing a uh, code. And also, I forgot to mention, if you guys are wondering where I got this, I got it from Rockstar. Um, it's about $100. Um, you might be able to find one for cheaper somewhere else, but uh, Rock Auto usually has good stuff. This one, um, just something power, I'll put it on the screen. Um, and they're, t they're typically a pretty decent value brand. Um, so now we've got this, I went ahead and moved that up. We'll go ahead and rotate this around, and we're going to go ahead and just give it a little push. Boom, just like that. And now we're going to go ahead grab our bolt. Now we're just going to go ahead and tighten this back down real quick. Super duper simple. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that up. And then we're going to take this guy, plug it back in. Wait for a click. You want to make sure it's got a nice good click. And now let's go ahead and hop into the interior and see if we can clear that engine code and make sure it goes away for good. All right, so here we are in the interior. Um, right down here, you can see I've got my little... Uh, just simple code reader. It plugs in right down underneath there. Um, so I have the key into the on position. Um, you can see everything is on. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, you guys might be able to see this. I'm going to go ahead and just erase codes. Yes, and before you want to do this, you want to make sure that's the only code in there. I already checked, it is the only code I have. So it is erasing the code currently. You want to make sure the car is off when you do this as well. You don't really want to do it while it's on. Good. All right, codes remaining is zero. We'll go back. And now we're gonna go ahead and do a start up the car and hopefully that check engine light goes away. So let's go ahead and try it. Oh, gotta put it in the clutch. All right. Now, when I went ahead and cleared this before with the bad valves, or the bad valve in it, um, it actually did take a minute for it to pop back up. So we're gonna go ahead and sit here and wait for that. Make sure it just runs up for, I don't know, two or three minutes. Uh, make sure that that code does not pop back in and the check engine light stays away. Um, but if it does, then that means that we have fixed our problem. Alright guys, well as you can see, it has been probably three or four minutes and uh, there's no more check engine light. So I think we fixed our problem. Um, you can go through and go ahead and run codes again. Um, but since it is a variable valve timing code, it will pop up immediately. Um, so go ahead, take it for a test drive, enjoy your new variable valve timing. Um, and all your extra power that that gives you. Um, and if you guys have any questions about what I did today, go ahead and drop a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.